All right, so let us start today's topic that is vector, and uh, as usual, we'll be splitting that into two lectures, lecture one and lecture two. And uh, this is a very easy topic as per se your uh, entrance examinations because uh, as per se J mains it is not asked at a very high difficulty level. So I would say if you are even a moderate level good at this chapter you will easily fetch the four marks that would come from this particular topic and i have taken the video to cover each and every topic that is there in this particular topic even if it is not in the je main syllabus i have taken it because you never know it it might help you in solving the problem because uh, i believe it's that kind of chapter where you should fetch four marks uh in this today's lecture what we are going to cover today is that we'll talk about the basics of the vector laws of addition and the algebra related to vectors collinearity and coplanarity so i'll be talking uh, in detail about this since you people generally do leave these uh, two topics we will be taking questions which are asked because these are uh, these are actually asked in the paper then a concept of angle bisector of two vectors and scalar dot product of two vectors this is what we are going to cover in today's lecture and we will be left with three major topics that is uh, vector dot product of two vectors and uh, scalar triple product and vector triple product which will we be doing in lecture 2 tomorrow all right so let's start today's topic okay let's just quickly revise the uh, basics of the vector topic uh, or what is vectors so we can start with the chapter then so vectors are nothing but i would say are rays right you people must have studied so ray what is ray ray emanates from a source and goes till the let's say destination right it goes till destination so the same thing is being done by vectors in maths right so they they will originate from a source let's say this is and they will go till this particular point so this is basically a vector so this is what is called the tail and this is called the head of the vector right this is or in fact if you want uh, this is the initial or you can say the source right this is the destination whatever you want to say so some people also call it as their not the destination but they call it the terminal right terminal where it ends right so we have a uh, different different varieties of uh, vector so for example basically what a vector has is it has two quantity which we have already studied in physics so it has first uh, direction and then it has magnitude right so th these are the two physical properties of uh, vector so they have direction they have uh, magnitude okay and if we talk about uh, different kinds of vectors so for example when are the vectors equal yes so they are equal when both uh, direction as well as uh, your magnitude is equal both of them are equal right B both equal what is like vectors for like vectors only the direction is equal right only direction what is unlike vectors yes for unlike vectors direction is opposite right i do not know about the magnitude but yes direction is 180 degree opposite to each other 180 degree opposite so for example if one is going like this the other will be coming like in this particular direction so in fact for both like and unlike you can say they are parallel vectors right they are parallel what about collinear vectors what will be collinear then yes collinear is nothing but when they are the same and in fact in form of vectors collinear is nothing but equal to parallel vectors why we call them as the parallel vector because vectors are generally free vectors is what we call vectors is we call them free vectors that means you can move them on the plane they are called free vectors so i can move this this is again the same vector same vector same vector so if you start moving this parallelly it will remain the same vector that is why we call vectors as free vectors so either you call them collinear or you call them parallel it is one and the same thing so parallel could be like vectors or as well as your unlike vectors okay uh, what will be co initial vectors co initial vectors so as the name suggests co initial vectors will be these vectors which have the same source right so for example this is one vector and the, the other one goes from here so this is the coinitial what is coterminus so if i say coterminus so as the name suggest they have the same terminal so for example this is the again the diagram but the arrows will change like this now both their heads will meet at a point here both their tails will meet at a point right and we all know what is a unit vector unit vector is a vector whose uh, magnitude is yes whose specifically magnitude is one so this is all about the basic that you people have already done so i'm not wasting enough uh, Uh, we are we are not devoting enough time on this so in generally a uh, unit vector is written by a cap which is nothing but a vector divided by its magnitude okay the other thing that lastly you can do is that reciprocal vector so what do you mean by a reciprocal vector is that uh, 
and it is something written like this a bar minus 1 so first of all you it, it is not equal to 1 by a vector vectors cannot come in the denominator all right so like matrices matrices cannot come in denominator because they are, are a syntax so similarly uh, you cannot put vectors in the denominator this is non mathematical completely so what do you mean by reciprocal vector reciprocal vector is which has the same direction direction remains same direction is same but yes the magnitude is being reciprocal so magnitude is 1 by mod a right so this is what is the meaning so if i have to say that uh, let's say uh, the this quantity b is the reciprocal vector right reciprocal uh, vector right so it will be given by nothing but 1 by mod a that is the reciprocal of the modulus and the direction will be nothing but a cap it will remain same okay so this is the reciprocal of a vector okay so let's start with the topic and let's see some algebraic uh, properties on vectors let's do addition and subtraction of vectors so first of all laws of addition so it says that triangle law of addition first of all again you people have done this so we'll do them very quickly so triangle of addition says if, if this is a vector which has a sense where its head is meeting a vector which is having its tail then the third vector which has its tail meeting with the uh, first vector and head meeting with the head of the other vector will be the resultant of these two so c vector is nothing but a plus b vector mind that in vectors the direction is very important so if somebody comes and draws this diagram and he says that uh, the arrow is something like this right whereas uh, a b and c remain same so uh, notice that here c will not be equal to a plus b right so keep this in mind so arrows are very important okay so in fact if you see this is uh, what can you say about this particular can you tell me what will be the triangle of addition in this particular case so just think about that uh, yes it starts from here goes here its head is meeting here its tail is meeting here so in a way i would say here a vector is equal to c vector plus b vector so this is the definition here so if you change the arrow this is how the result will also change the other is the parallelogram law of addition so that means if uh, two sides are the parallelogram so let's say sorry this is a misprint so this is a let's say right so a is one of the adjacent sides and the other adjacent side is b then the diagonal right so diagonal is the resultant basically okay diagonal is the resultant which is given by nothing but a plus b vector so this is oc right oc vector is nothing but a plus b vector in fact uh, we will do it later we can say a b will be nothing but uh, you can say what a minus b vector right we will do this later so don't worry about this the third property that you people can also use and this is something which you have already used in electrostats as well that is the polygon law of addition so that means so let's say this is a polygon right uh, a and b c d so it's a six sided polygon and f so if you if the, what is the polygon law says that let's say you have a hexagon right let me draw it like a benzene shape you start from here and you travel like this you keep traveling and again come back to here so this sum of all the vectors sum of all the vectors that are represented by this will be nothing but zero this is the major property right and if you see notice here the direction is a then you have b you have c you have d then you have e the f should have been in this particular direction but it is in the opposite direction so i could say minus f here equal to zero so in a way f is nothing but the sum of all the other yes resultant of all the other so you people must have used in electrostats where a force is being exerted at a point how to find the resultant of a force so this is where we actually have used it okay and if we talk about the subtraction of vectors so subtraction of vectors is something very similar to what you people have done in addition so in addition we used to say a plus b right so let's take the diagram this is a uh, the direction of b is like this okay so b is this is a plus b right this is a plus b that is the sum that you have done now you want a difference so difference is nothing but a minus b vector so for minus b what we can say is that for minus b magnitude remains same magnitude is equal to same but what will change yes direction will be anti directional direction will change by 180 degrees so it, if it was going above from this source now from the same source it will go downwards by the same margin so it is a and this is now minus b which you can treat it as a new vector that is c vector 
now let's see if this is a vector it is traveling like this then you are traveling like this so a vector which travels from here to here in this direction will be resultant so this is nothing but a plus c vector right and c is nothing but yes minus b so this is your similarly you can say this is nothing but your a minus b vector so let's take a question on addition and subtraction it says if sum of two unit vectors is a unit vector then find the magnitude of their difference so let's say if sum of two unit vectors so a plus b rather i should write like this right is equal to c vector this is given right and all of them are unit vectors so a plus b where both are uh, unit vectors and c again will be given a uh, unit vector you need to find the magnitude of their difference that is you are asked to find this particular value okay so i'll try to use geometry here okay so you can actually solve this by squaring and all these properties let me tell you a geometrical solution for this which i have find very interesting here so let's construct a diagram where uh, i have taken a triangle which is this is a cap vector this is b cap vector so then this will be the resultant that is a cap plus b cap right now what is given to you is that all the three vectors are yes so the magnitude so that means this is of length one this is of length one and the resultant is also given to be of length one so that means this becomes a equilateral triangle right this becomes the equilateral triangle so equilateral triangle has all the angles as 60 degree can we say this up till now any problem okay now we want to find the uh, magnitude of a minus b vector right what is a minus b so for minus b what you people will be doing again we will be extending this line in the downward direction something like this right and if you join these two points right so if you join these two points so this is something your a minus b right and which is this is minus b now can you calculate this particular value over here let's see how you are going to calculate i'll show you how how it becomes very simple if this is 60 so what is the angle here this is 120 degree and since this is one unit and this is minus b but the magnitude of minus b will be nothing but equal to minus 1 which is 1 so that means this triangle so if i name them a b c and this becomes d so triangle a b d is isosceles right because we know that a b is equal to b d this is given to us in the equation so that means if i say what is angle uh, d a b what is this angle this so this angle will be what 120 uh, 180 minus uh, 120 by 2 because it will be divided into so this comes out to be 30 degrees right now let me see what is angle d a c d complete angle so i am talking about this particular angle so if i have to highlight so i am asking this particular angle now this whole angle so this is d a c which is 60 plus 30 so this comes out to be a 90 degree which implies this is a right angle triangle right so what is the right angle triangle here so triangle a d c is right angle triangle at a we know this so for right angle triangle we know that pythagoras will be applied so if you apply pythagoras what will happen then that uh, c d square should be equal to a d square plus a c square right you know the value of a c a c is 1 it is given to you what is c d so c d is nothing but 2 times b c b c you already know is 1 so this becomes 2 this comes out to be 4 you get the value of a d so a d comes out to be nothing but root 3 and this is what you were asked to find this is the answer as simple as so without even going for any dot product you have actually got the answer and this is how we can actually use geometry in these kind of problems so you wanted to find uh, what you wanted to find this particular value so modulus a minus b vector is nothing but your side a d right in this in the diagram you have got the side a d is nothing as is root 3 which is your answer i hope this problem is clear now let's take the other problem which says if a vector a and b represent two adjacent sides of a regular hexagon so first of all you will find uh, problems on regular hexagon or regular pentagon uh, very frequently in the vectors topic so what do you mean by regular that uh, all sides are equal 
right all sides are equal in length that is very important and regular hexagon it's completely a symmetrical figure that is another very important property so i'll try and explain what do you mean by symmetrical figure here with respect to hexagon because it is being uh, used very frequently so this is the hexagon which i have taken two adjacent sides are a and b so i have taken this and this now you want to find every other side in terms of a and b this is the question so first of all if i say that c and f are being joined right so c and f if they are joined and if i check it with a b so the formula that you people have to first of all understand is that uh, f c is nothing but twice of a b similarly if you draw a diagonal b e here right b e right b e will be similarly i can say b e is twice of a f so please remember these formulas they come in very handy in terms of uh, you know your uh, question on regular hexagon so now let's see how we are going to apply the problem okay so i have taken the arrows uh, wherever they it is required now let me apply the question so you need to find first of all bc length right you want to find bc right this is the uh, signal so even if we try and uh, uh, talk about a position vector which i suppose you people also know so what is the position vector of a line so position vector is of a point position vector of a point so if i say bc so bc means that you are going from b to c and its position is given by c vector minus b vector where c is the position vector of vertex c and b is the position vector of vertex b all right i i hope you know this fact uh, okay so now skipping this now so we go to bc so for bc uh, you need let's say i have drawn a construction that i have already taken bf right this is uh, fb here so you know that if a vector is a you know also know that a b vector that i have taken is to be b right so now in triangle if a b you can apply triangle law of addition so if you apply triangle law of addition what will become you go from here you go from here then if you go from here to here that will be the resultant so i can say if b vector is nothing but if a plus a b vector right and if you also talk about the resultant that how can you check which is the resultant c if a then you start from a to b then f and b the line joining the extreme points will be the resultant this is how you can also remember them so if b comes out to be nothing but a plus b vector okay but you are not asked if b right remember so now let's see we wanted bc let me take this as uh, the shape as fc so now i know that fc is 2 times ab and if i take the same direction as ab so i have taken the same direction in the same sense right so this will become what 2b vector because the magnitude is twice and the direction is same so that means it is 2b vector now let's take triangle fbc so in triangle fbc again what is the triangle law of addition c f to b b to c then f to c will be the resultant so fc is basically the resultant of what fb plus bc again by the same law you can say the extreme values so we wanted to find what bc we what all values we know yes we know the fc value here this time fc is what to b fb is what we just calculated that is a plus b now you wanted the value of bc which you have already now you can see here that we have got the value of bc so we, bc is nothing but you can say a minus b right so you have got three adjacent sides now let's go to cd so this part is done now let's talk about cd so cd will be nothing but parallel to af so now this is another important property of your uh, regular hexagon so these two sides will be parallel but they if you are going in the cyclic order they will be anti parallel so if you say this is a so then this will be absolutely minus a so you have cd as minus a similarly if i talk about de de will be parallel to ab vector de will be parallel to ab vector again a property of hexagon so, and again if you talk about d to e you are going from d to e so its direction will be reversed so it will be said as minus b and now ef vector if we talk about so ef vector again would be parallel to bc vector but since if you are going from e to f the sense of direction is change by 180 degrees so if it was a minus b this will be 
B minus A. This is how you can find all the six sides using when only two sides are given. The purpose of taking this particular problem was to highlight what do you mean by a regular hexagon? What is the symmetry all about? So remember these formulas that FC is equal to 2AB. That is the major middle. This. So in fact, if you can also see here that FC divides this regular hexagon into two uh, basically two areas which or two equal areas right this, this is also the way of understanding this and other thing is that uh, the sides are also parallel so this CD here will be parallel to your AF something like this all right so opposite sides on the other side will be parallel okay now let's take the other problem which is again a very famous problem but I'll try I'm taking this because this is being asked repeatedly and I'll try to solve it with the two methods so that I can make sure that you understand two concepts so the first method that I'm going to take is a simpler one, right, which is basically by extension of the diagram. So method one. So what is the question? First of all, it says G is the centroid of the triangle uh, ABC. Then you have to show that GA plus GB plus GC is equal to zero, right? Or conversely. So I have taken both the questions. So if it is given that GA plus GB plus GC equal to zero, then G is the centroid and vice versa. So we'll try to prove this first one. Then you can automatically prove the other. So the method one is what I have done is I have already drawn in the diagram that uh, ABC was given to you, right? What I did, I draw a parallelogram, which is parallelogram G B if C is constructed, right? I constructed this. So how this constructed is done? So the construction is that uh, you, GC is parallel. So this is parallel. And if this is the side, so this is this particular side so this is how we have uh, particularly taken this okay so if this is constructed parallelogram is the, there so d will be d will be point of intersection of diagonals right it will be point of intersection of diagonals of parallelogram and we know that if it is point of intersection of uh, diagonal so that means d is uh, midpoint D is midpoint of GF, right? This is what we can say. Okay, any problem? Or in fact, I can say that uh, 2 times GD is equal to GF, right? This is what I can say. So let's assume that I have taken the uh, the uh, direction like this, right? For G, GB and GC. So what does G, G, A, uh, GB plus uh, GB vector plus GC vector? So if you apply parallelogram of law of addition, so if these two are adjacent signs, then the resultant will be there diagonal. So this will be nothing but GF, right? Now you already know the value of GF here. GF is nothing but twice GD vector, right? So GB plus uh, GC is equal to twice GD. This is what you have already obtained. Now we also know the property that uh, what is G? G is centroid. Uh, how do you get centroid? Centroid is a property of, yes, medians, right? And centroid divides the medians in the ratio, yes, 2 is to 1. So that means AG is to uh, GD is equal to 2 is to 1. Or I can say that, uh, what, what, yes, come on. So yes, AG is nothing but 2 times GD vector. Can we say this? So we know that 2GD is AG. So let's use this here. So this becomes GB plus GC is equal to what? It will become AG vector, right? So if this is AG, can you do something about this? Yes, we can flip it. So if you want to flip this, this will become what? Absolutely. So now the question is over. So it becomes GB plus GC. And if I bring it here, it will be minus AG equal to zero. And if you flip there, positions right if you start going from g to a then it will be negative sign and hence proved so this is what is your answer this is what you wanted to prove so this is the method one that you can do by construction okay i hope this is clear uh, then let me take the next method that i want to talk about also so method two of doing this particular problem is by will you we know section formula right so you also need to understand something about section formula in a way. Let me just talk about it. So property says if this is the triangle in a way, or let's say we should not say a triangle, but let's say these are the forces. Let me name them A, B, 
and C and this is D right this is something like a B here a C here and a D here and if you, it is given that D is a midpoint then what you can say that a B plus a C by 2 will be nothing but a D vector now we easily understand this by the terms of position vector but this is also true for line vector so this is something where I have written for line vectors right I know that you people are very much comfortable if I had written something like this B plus C vector by 2 is your position vector of D that's completely acceptable this is not wrong this is completely right so this is position vectors right so what I have written here is position vectors whereas here I am talking about the line vector so line vectors are also in the same uh, ratio as the points are here so if you apply this in this particular problem so if I take the triangle let's say GBC right I know that GD is bisecting B, BC line so what can you say about GD so GD will be nothing but what yes so GD will be GB plus GC by 2 exactly similar to what you have already obtained here can you see that it becomes 2 GD is equal to GB plus GC which you have already obtained see here the rest of the process is same right I wanted to highlight the section formula how you can use so if let's say it is dividing in the ratio m is to n right rather than being the midpoint then how you can write this in the terms of uh, uh, line vectors is that m will be multiplied with the AC one so m times AC plus n times AB by m plus n will give you what yes it will give you a d vector line vectors also so don't worry about by using this this comes very handy sometimes in tough problems okay now let us talk about the concept of collinear vectors and points so i actually describe this in two particular cases i'll talk about collinear points right and i'll talk about collinear vectors separately right this is what i intend to do so if I talk about two vectors so see if we talk about two points right two points are always collinear nothing needs to be proved here they are always always collinear okay so but if we want to talk about two vectors yes that is when the question start two vectors so vector is basically ray right remember so we can talk about rays being collinear or not so if you want to talk about two vectors being uh, collinear so the funda is that uh, a should be equal to lambda times b if this is the case then a and b are collinear right this is the rule a and b are collinear if a is equal to lambda times b where lambda is a scalar quantity right if you can express the one vector in terms of the other vector where only the magnitude is changing the other important uh, observation of this fact is that let's say if I say a and b are uh, two non coplanar right to uh, sorry non not co non coplanar non collinear we'll talk about coplanar also they are non collinear points and it is given that xa plus uh, yb is equal to 0 right if there's something like this is given we know that uh, if you see this becomes what that means something like this and in fact if you see they are arranged something in the terms of so here lambda role is being placed by minus y by x this used to happen when they were collinear but here it is given that they are non-collinear so the rule says that if this is happening then x must be equal to y equal to 0 very important stuff so if the vectors are non-collinear and they are written as a linear combination then the coefficients should be all 0 this is how you should remember this okay now let's talk about the points so two points are always collinear we know this fact now if we talk about three points now yes then the question arises because by three points you can form two lines and when there are two lines then only we can try and you know talk about vectors so let's say there are a b and c points which are given to you right so they are two uh, and they are basically capital a point capital b point and capital c point so method one here method one here is to form lines out of it so for example you can form a b vector and a c vector you can draw like this and if a b vector is equal to lambda times a c vector right this implies then points are points are collinear right this is what you can do immediately points are collinear the other method that you can also apply here that without uh, 
doing this particular activity here is that if you can express a b c as x a plus uh, y b plus z c is equal to 0 where where x plus y plus z is equal to 0 then also I can immediately say that a b and c are collinear vectors or collinear points right so this is the law that you people have to remember so for lines what you will have to remember a is equal to lambda b for points x linear combination when the sum of the coefficient is equal to 0 if they are non collinear right if they are non collinear then the coefficients must be all equal to 0 this is the important step Okay, let's take a question to understand the concept of collinear vectors. It's a A, B, C are vectors such that they are non-zero and no two of which are collinear. So that means A cannot be written as lambda B, B cannot be written as mu C and A cannot be written as gamma C. So they, they are not related like this. If the vectors A plus 2B is collinear with C, so now this is given that A plus uh, 2B vector is collinear with C. So that means you can say it is lambda times C, right? And it is given that B plus 3C vector is uh, collinear with a vector right so that means this is mu times a vector this is also given you are asked to find the value of a plus 2b plus 6c you need to find this particular value okay now let's see how this question has to be attempted it's a very good question to understand the concept of vectors so if you see here a plus 2b here is, there is also a plus 2b what is missing is the 6c component so let's add 6c on both sides right if the vectors are equal so then the addition will not make any change so this actually becomes lambda plus 6 times c vector okay now let's talk about this one here it is b plus 2c uh, 3c and here it is 2b plus 6c so can i say it? first of all multiply this by 2 so this becomes 2 mu a right and here a is missing so let's add a also on both these sides so this also becomes this particular stuff which is 2 mu plus 1 times a vector right now notice that both of them have actually become a plus 2b plus 6c so that means the value of both the rhs's these are the two rhs should also be equal right and if we make them equal this comes out to be lambda plus 6 times c vector is equal to 2 mu plus 1 times a vector can you see that this is nothing but a scalar quantity let me call it lambda dash c and this is another scalar quantity let me call this mu dash a vector so actually what you people have done is you have represented this something like this which is nothing but definition of collinear vectors so that by means you have actually proved that a and c are collinear vectors okay but whereas it was given to you in the question that no two of which are collinear remember here no two of which are collinear so if there are two non-collinear vectors so we just did the formula if two non-collinear vectors are there that is let's say xa plus yc for example and they are given in a linear combination then if they are non-collinear it is given that they are non-collinear and they are given a linear combination then only thing that can happen is that their coefficients must be zero so for example here that means lambda plus 6 should be equal to 2 mu plus 1 should be equal to 0 this is the only possibility that we have now if we just put the values of lambda plus 6 here then what the answer is yes absolutely so the answer then will become 0 here answer here will also become 0 so the answer that we were trying to find is 0 this is the particular answer to this problem right just go through the question once again it's a beautiful concept to understand how collinear and non-collinear in the same question work okay okay now let us talk about the coplanar vectors and what is coplanarity so as the name suggests coplanar so the plane word comes into the definition itself so coplanar as the name suggests from plane so vectors or the points which are in the same plane so as i am writing on the screen so this is actually a plane so if i talk about points again i'll divide this uh, into points and uh, lines right there could be points which could be pla planar and there could be lines which could be Coplanar. So lines and we will talk about the points. So three points are always coplanar. No need to prove anything. Three points are always coplanar. So that means they we can always have uh, a 
a plane passing through three um, points okay so nothing need to be proved so two lines if i talk about yes two lines are always coplanar please remember all these concepts which i am talking about here because sometimes you people tend to miss the uh, miss them in uh, you know questions where they are being asked now what we require to prove is three lines or in fact in our topic is three vectors okay so how do we do this so let's say if you want to prove a b and c are three vectors and you want to prove them coplanar so that means they can be written in a they can be written in linear combination they can be written in linear combination if they can be written in a linear combination that means it's coplanar so for example if c can be written as lambda times a vector plus mu times b vector this implies that they are coplanar so that means uh, a you know a, a resultant of a and b will give you c that means obviously there is uh, how do you understand this as this is resultant of some a and b resultant of a and b for some magnitude of a and b the resultant of two vectors always lie in the same plane so if c is equal to them that means a b c are in the same plane or in fact you can say they are written in a linear combination so if you say that three uh, uh, the, the three vectors which are non coplanar now let's say we talk about they are non coplanar and you write them in linear combination that is x times a vector plus y times b vector plus z times c vector equal to 0 this is only possible when x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to 0 if they are non coplanar right this is how you have to run then so the important property for three vectors to be coplanar or three lines to be coplanar is that one can be written as a linear combination of the other two right this is how you understand this now if i uh, convert this into points so for a point problem it would look like a four point problem so by four points this will actually trans transcend to this particular case where you can actually draw three lines so for example you are given the position vectors of four points namely let's say a b c and d so how many lines you can draw yes you can draw a b line you can draw a c line and you can draw a d line which let's say we call this as a vector we call this as b vector uh, not a vector let's uh, take some other vector because we have already assumed a b and c as a position vectors so if you want them to be in coplanar format so somewhere let's say if a d can be represented as lambda times uh, a b plus mu times a c right then they are coplanar so the same step will be followed in fact from four points we will convert this to three line or three vector problem other than that if you want a straightforward formula so we do have a straightforward formula also so what it says that if x times a vector plus y times b vector plus uh, z times c plus let's say w times d vector is equal to zero if and only if x plus y plus z plus w comes to be 0 if this is 0 and this is also 0 if for some values of x y z and w you can find linear combination of these four vectors to be 0 then i can say that these four points are coplanar though this uh, this particular concept is used the least in the question because here you have to solve for four variables i would advise you to convert the four point into three line problems and then apply this particular concept all right let's apply them in the questions to understand the concept okay, so let's take the question it says uh, position vectors of four points so a is given now b is given to you c is given to you and these are the four points so what we can draw actually is we can draw how many lines three lines from these four points that is a b a c and a d and if these three lines are coplanar then obviously these four points will be coplanar okay so these are the points which are given so what will be a b vector a b vector will be position vector b minus position vector a right something like this so it will be what minus i a then plus 5 j i am just solving one so that you can understand so b minus a so this minus this this will be minus 3 k right and similarly then you can find your a c and your a d vectors as well so now these are the vectors that line vectors that you will be using and if we want to prove them that they are coplanar i can say that ad vector can be written times x times ab vector plus y times ac vector where x and y are scalar 
right so now just noting them what it will become the left hand side will be x times what is a, a b minus i plus uh, 5 j minus 3 k plus y times a c vector will be minus 4 i plus 3 j plus 3 k right this is what you will get and if we combine the i terms alongside so this will be what yes minus x minus 4 y right z component will be what j component will be 5 x plus 3 y and similarly the k component then would become what uh, it will be minus okay and this must be equal to your ad vector so what is your ad vector is ad is i cap plus uh, 7 j cap plus lambda plus 1 1 k cap so if both the vectors are equal then the components of i j and k cap must be equal so the first equation that you will get is 1 is equal to minus x minus 4 y right the next equation that you will get is by equating the j component that is 7 is equal to 5x plus 3y right and the third component will be lambda plus 1 is equal to what it will become yes it will be minus 3x plus 3y so your target was to find the value of lambda in this particular question right remember here find the value of lambda if they are coplanar so here how many variables are there here they are three variables and there you have three equations and in fact it is much more easy to solve because here you have x and y linear equation in two variables right you can simply solve them to get your answers okay so if you try and solve this solving is very easy so the answers of x and y that you will get will be x will come out to be 31 by 17 and y if you calculate will come out to be minus 12 by 17 just put the values here to find the value of lambda and if you do this the value of lambda will come out to be minus 146 by 17 which is nothing but your a option so this is how the question on coplanarity has to be solved where you were asked a value of a third parameter using the same concept okay i hope the concept is clear okay now let's take another question on coplanar it says that p b q and c are collinear where a b c are three non coplanar vectors so here it's a question where it is a combination of both collinear and non coplanar vectors right so very interesting and you need to find the value of t here where t is the scalar so you need to find value of t okay let's start the question then it is given that p which is a combination of three non coplanar vectors so now a very important concept from here so the important concept is that if you want to represent any vector here any vector vector says any vector on can be represented as linear combination linear combination of three vectors linear combination of three non coplanar vectors any vector in any vector that you want to take can be written as a linear combination of three non coplanar vectors very important stuff so here it is in that particular same set okay so let's talk about q q is linear combination of uh, just two okay not a problem uh, and r is nothing but b plus tc where t is the scalar component which we need to find and they are given to be collinear right now they are collinear so what can we talk about the collinear front so if they are collinear so that means pq must be something uh, or let's say if we try so pq will be one of the lines then there could be line uh, rq and there could be another line pr can i say lambda times pq will be equal to pr if they are have to be collinear you can take any other uh, you can take uh, pq is equal to lambda at pr i i'll tell you why i'm taking lambda on this side not on this side uh, you will uh, immediately understand so what is pq uh, pq will be position vector of q minus uh, position so if you want to understand by the position vector way yes this is it so q minus p if you do q minus p it will be a plus uh, b minus c right and what will be pr pr vector pr will be r position vector minus p position vector right so r is b so this is uh, minus a uh, b will be again sorry minus b would be there because uh, minus p has to be there okay so minus b and then what will be the next one then yes so now here if you see why i have done this step is that it will get you t minus 1 times c 
and if you just put these values over here so can you see a change what is happening here is minus c is equal to what yes this particular value here now the reason that i have done here i have shifted lambda over there is because now you will not get a lambda multiplied by t here otherwise you will have got lambda here it would have been multiplied by, by t which would have complicated the case so if you see this becomes lambda a lambda b minus lambda c is equal to minus a minus b plus t minus 1 c and if we com collate all the components you will get lambda plus 1 times uh, a vector plus uh, lambda plus 1 times b vector and this will be minus uh, or let's say we take the plus again minus lambda minus t plus 1 times c vector is equal to 0. Now what is given to you now? Let's again go back. In the question it was stated that a, b, c, a, b and c are non-coplanar. Right. If they are non-coplanar and they are written as a linear combination, here they are written as a linear combination. So if they are non-coplanar and they are written something like this, we just did the application or the concept that then x should be equal to y should be equal to z should be equal to 0. This is the only possible way that non-coplanar vectors can be written in a linear combination. So if we go on and do this particular step here, uh, this reduces to lambda plus 1 equal to 0, which gives you lambda's value as minus 1, the same step here. So this should also be 0, that is minus lambda minus t plus, sorry, 1 equal to 0. We have already calculated lambda is minus 1, so this becomes 1 plus 1. From here, you get your answer that t is equal to 2 for these to be accepted as the answer. So this is the particular answer that you people were asked to find. I hope the question is clear how we have used the non-coplanar concept and the collinear concept in the same problem. So very important problem as per se your, uh, you know, uh, uh, entrance examination point of view because it checks your two concepts in a single problem. Okay, now let's talk about the scalar or the dot product of two vectors which you people have extensively done in class 11th as well. So a vector dot b vector, right? It will, what is the value? Modulus a modulus b cosine of the angle between them. So this is the value. And if you check, this is nothing but the right hand side is scalar because nothing is left in the uh, vector side. That is why this is also called scalar. So a dot b is a scalar quantity. Okay. So now what does this represent geometrically? You just quickly talking about briefly, what is the geometrical application? So the geometry application of this particular concept is that it denotes projection of projection, basically projection of one vector of one vector over the other, of one vector over the other. This is what it actually denotes. Okay, let's take with the help of a diagram. So let's take that these two are the uh, vectors which we have to take. Uh, all right, so let me take this as uh, your A vector and this is your B vector. Now you want to find projection. Let's say we are trying to find projection of B on A. So first of all, what do you mean by projection of B on A? Let me explain the concept to you. So this is something that you have an infinite source of light somewhere here. So from infinite source of lights, lights will come parallel on this. And what will be the shadow of this particular length on this particular line is basically what is the projection. Since these points are meeting, so the projection of this point will be this only. Whereas for this, what you will draw, you will try and put up a perpendicular because uh, since the infinite source is there, so this would be the so if shadow is coming from here so just understand that light rays are coming parallel because it's an infinite source right so this projection that is let's say i'll talk about a b and let's say c so the projection of b on a is nothing but the a b value okay and projection is basically a scalar quantity Let, let's also understand it this way so projection is something which we call as scalar quantity projection is the length so how do you find length you want to find a b and uh, now you, your target is, so what is, uh, if you know that this is theta, so AB will be nothing but modulus B cos theta, right? This is the projection that you want to find. And now if you just go back to the formula here, mod B cos theta is there, but yes, you can write it in terms of dot product also. It becomes A dot B divided by modulus A. Just see here. So that is why we say that a dot b is very helpful in finding projections. So if you want to find projection of uh, 
a on b then obviously it the formula will be nothing but a dot b by modulus b this will be the formula so now again remember it is a scalar quantity because projection is magnitude length distance right whatever you want to call it so it is a scalar quantity other thing that we people also do in this chapter is the component so component of let's say b on a it is something similar to what we did in projection but it is just that we component is a now a vectorial quantity it's a vector so you need to give the direction also to the projection so projection vector of uh, or you can say vector of projection or vector projection or projection vector basically so component of b on a is nothing but the projection vector so you already know the what you know that projection of b on a is of this magnitude you just need to give it direction so direction can be given by what so you know this value this is the magnitude right now you want to give it direction so direction can be given by yes so direction is nothing but a cap unit vector gives you the direction so it is this and a cap can be written as yes a by modulus a so that is why you find component of a or b on a written something like this at mod like this okay so you can remember this formula or even you can derive this is very easy right and other thing that you also get here in the question is that component of b perpendicular to a so component of b perpendicular to a is nothing but your bc vector that is what is the component of b perpendicular to a so if this is bc you have got ab you want bc so in triangle abc what you can say you can just apply the uh, triangle law of addition so you know that ac is equal to ab plus bc and from here i can say that bc vector is nothing but ac vector minus ab vector you know now all the values so ac is nothing but b vector and this is what you have already calculated just put the value here to get component of b perpendicular to a all right so this is how geometrically the dot product is being used okay i am leaving the pro basic properties that uh, uh, which, which are related to dot product for you guys and the in, uh, important ones i'll be taking in the problems okay okay let's take this question on dot product so it says if a and b are unit vectors you need to find the greatest value of uh, these two values okay so now onwards if i write a and b so just assume that this is this because it is sometimes difficult to type uh, everything using vectors all right uh, so you want to find the main greatest value of these two terms so first of all let us think of how you are going to simplify this and the first formula that you have to understand is uh, the square of sum of two vectors so it is nothing but i know that uh, most of you know this but i am still doing it yes so it will be not 2ab but it will be 2a dot b so and i am assuming that a and b uh, have an angle theta in between them all right let's assume this also so they make an angle theta between them so if you see that since they are unit vectors so this will reduce to 1 plus 1 plus uh, 2 mod a mod b uh, this will be cos theta and this entirely reduces to what particular value 2 plus 2 cos theta and you can take 2 common and this will be 1 plus cos theta and what is 1 plus cos theta it is nothing but 2 into cos square theta by 2 and this complete value then becomes 4 cos square theta by 2 but since you were asked the value of modulus a plus b this is what you have got for square so actually you have got this value to be 4 cos square theta by 2 by uh, simplicity I can simply say that this will be what 2 times cos theta by 2 all right now let's apply the same steps to a minus b so if I say the square, so the square, so formula that you people should remember for this is, yes, minus 2 a dot b, right? And if you remember this, this again will become 2 minus 2 cos theta, right? So this is what you will get here. I have just gone a step ahead and did it directly. So this will be minus 2 minus 2 cos theta as we did here. And if you solve this, this will become 1 minus cos theta. And what is 1 minus cos theta? Yes, so it will be 4 sine square theta by 2 and from here I can say that modulus of a minus b will give you 2 sine 
theta by 2. Now you wanted to find the minimum value of when you have added both of them. So if I add both of them, so that is mod of a plus b plus uh, mod of a minus b, then will be what? 2 cos theta by 2 plus 2 sin theta by 2. So on the right hand side, what is the parameter or the variable? That is theta. And if you take two, two common, so it just simply reduces to this particular problem. So actually this is nothing but a trigonometry problem now. Right, so it's a trigonometry problem where you are asked to find the maximum value of a cos theta plus b sin theta. So now remember that this, I am not going to get into the basics of this. We know that the range of this is nothing from minus a square plus b square to root a square plus b square, right? So the maximum value here could be that it particularly can take because a is 1, b is 1. So if you put it here, it will be root 2 is the maximum value that it can take or it can it will take values from minus 2 to 2 so the max answer that we can obtain here is nothing but 2 root 2 and this is the answer right this is how you solve this very basic problem it was basically a trigonometric concept that you have to apply in this particular question and the formula that uh, modulus square is basically 2ab if it is plus minus 2ab if it is minus inside Okay, let's take the next problem which says a b c b vectors of equal magnitude so that the angle between them is uh, given in pair so magnitude of all these vectors is equal right equal magnitude but we do not know the magnitude so but we just know that they are equal angle between a and b vector is given to be alpha between b and uh, c vector it is given to be beta and between c and a vector so it is following a cyclic order it is given to be gamma right this is what is given to you now you need to find the minimum value of cos alpha plus cos beta plus cos gamma so actually this looks like a trigonometry problem first of all right you want to find this uh, particular value the maximum value of this right so how do you are going to approach this so for this since there are three vectors involved so whenever three vectors are involved you should actually think of this particular formula that is sum of the squares of three so if i say this so the in vectors it can be reduced to something like this that is the squares of individual vectors plus what you used to do for a plus b yes a dot b similarly a dot b here then you will have b dot c then you have c dot a so this is the formula that you have to use for three vectors okay just add to your formula list now let's see what we can say about all this so it is given that they have equal magnitude let's take this to be lambda so what will be the RHS? 3 lambda square, right? What is A dot B? So A dot B will be modulus A modulus B cos alpha. And we can say this is nothing but lambda square cos alpha. And similarly, what will be? So I'm just uh, writing here. So it will be lambda square cos alpha. Similarly, B dot C will be lambda square cos beta. And this will be lambda square cos gamma. So now you get the hold of what we are going to do in this question. Why? Because you have actually got cos alpha plus cos beta plus cos gamma. Now your target is to find the minimum value of this. Sorry, I have written maximum over here, which is wrong. Uh, we are asked to find the minimum value. All right. So just let me correct it here. You want to find the minimum value. So up till now, there is no problem. This is what we have reached. So now let's talk about the LHS. What is the LHS here? So if we see the LHS, so LHS is modulus A plus B plus C whole square. We do not know what is the value. We do not know, right? We do not know, but we need to find the minimum and maximum. So whenever you have minimum or maximum problem, think of what converting the question into inequality. That is the hint that I can provide you. Always think of converting the question into inequality problem. So since there is equation here, equality here, we need to convert this into inequality. How we can do so? We do not know anything about this, but since it is modulus, modulus is distance. So we know that this is always greater than or equal to zero. This is for sure that I know. So that means this particular quantity is always greater than or equal to zero. I can say this much and if I can say this much so that means 3 plus 2 times I can take the lambda square common and it can be removed because it is always positive right so this is what it will be and now the question is solved so cos alpha plus cos beta plus cos gamma is always greater than or equal to minus 
3 by 2 so that means the minimum value is nothing but minus 3 by 2 this is the answer we were looking for and this is how you solve this particular question so the reason of taking this particular question is to make sure that you understand the concept of a plus b plus c whole square and how to find maximum minimum problem so for maximum minimum we need to convert this into inequality problem and obviously anytime we can take modulus to be greater than zero now let's take another problem it says find a vector of magnitude 4 which is equally inclined to the vectors i plus j j plus k and k plus i so these are the three vectors which are given to you so you want to find a vector of magnitude 4 so let's first of all take a vector which is let's say we take a a vector which is given by x i cap plus uh, y j cap plus z k cap all right since the uh, magnitude is given i can say x square plus y square plus z square is equal to 16 this is also known to me now now let's start applying what else is given to us it is given that i plus uh, this a vector is equally inclined to the three vectors that is it is equally inclined to i plus j it is equally inclined to j plus k that means the angle which it makes with these three is actually equal right if the angle is equal can i say that the cosine of the angle will be also equal right so what is cos theta from the dot product so if i have two angles so a dot b will be given by mod a mod b this is what I can say so if I start applying this particular concept here what you will get is a dot i plus j divided by mod a and modulus i plus j should be equal to now next component is with yes a dot j plus k divided by modulus a mod of j plus k similarly the next would be a dot k plus i divided by mod a modulus k plus i right this is what i can obtain from here and if you see that uh, this reduces to a very simple problem because this this and this gets cancelled out now what is a dot i plus j so now just simply going on the formula list or uh, the conceptual list so just if i talk about the concept we know that i dot i is 1 i dot j is 0 and similarly i dot k is 0 why because if there are two perpendicular vectors so their dot product will be 0 this implies a and perpendicular to b right which we, we know this is the very basic stuff so what is a dot i a dot i will give you only x so this will be x plus and j dot will be y right and this will be what root 2 next would be what j is y plus z plus divided by root 2 and this will be z plus x by root 2 these three are given to be equal and whenever you are given that three terms are equal how do we solve them is that this is the general method of solving them that let's take them to be lambda and we can also cancel this right and then we can take them to be lambda so for example after take cancelling now i should assume that this is equal to lambda okay let me just erase this from here i'm not assuming it to be lambda here i'm assuming it to be lambda here now how do you solve this now so how do you solve this now so the simple calculation is that uh, x plus y so i am just uh, solving out on, on your behalf though it is not required and you also know that z plus x is equal to lambda so you can just uh, yes subtract this this comes out to be 0 x is equal to z just put the value here so you get x is equal to z is equal to lambda by 2 now you want to put uh, the value of y similarly y can be calculated all of them will come out to be lambda by 2 but now you need to figure out what is lambda for that you already have this particular equation here so if i put all these values here in this particular step so what you will get lambda square by oh sorry so it will be nothing what you can say here is that if all x y and z are equal what i can say is 3 x square is equal to 16 from here i am talking about right okay so this becomes what then x square is equal to 16 by 3 x is nothing but yes lambda square by 4 just put the value to find the answer so if i say that what is lambda then can you tell me the value of lambda so lambda will be plus minus this will be 2 this will be 4 8 by root 3 this is the lambda okay clear 
and though we were not in fact required to find lambda our target was what to find was that we wanted to find a we wanted to find x y and z we know that x y and z are all same so i can say a is nothing but x times i cap plus j cap plus k cap what is the value of x you are getting so you are getting the value of x from here is plus minus 4 by root 3 just put it here so the answer to our problem is that this is the particular answer we were trying to find okay i hope this question is clear now let's take another problem on the scalar dot product and uh, this question has been asked at iit je advance uh, i i don't know the uh, exactly i think it is about in 2012 let's read the problem it says if a b c are unit vectors so they are given to be unit vectors so that means as I recommend that whenever you see the question and whatever you can infer out from the question start writing on the paper it becomes the question starts to you will start to get hold of what the question is saying believe me on this this improves your confidence level in the paper then you are given something a big equation like this and you need to find a very peculiar term like 2a plus 5b plus 5c all right so I'm not sure how I am going to find that particular value but let's again start with what i already have in the question so there's something important to understand okay so if you want to be good at maths always stick to what is given in the question and what you know and then try and render what is asked don't just directly start thinking on how i'm going to get this okay now something of this sort is given to you what i can reduce is that lhs would be something of this sort where if you start separating each term right something of this sort okay equal to 9 and if I club this a square b square so how many times a square b square will come yes here one a square a square already so I can say 2 times modulus a square plus b square plus mod c square right and this will be what minus 2 times a dot b right plus b dot c plus c dot a equal to 9 this is what you will actually obtain in this particular problem any any problems till yet now let's uh, again then you it's a bottleneck so people are not able to understand how we have to proceed from here now if you talk about this particular lengthy statement can you correlate it with something that we have already done yes I can correlate it with this particular problem I know that I I understand this particular stuff as well right so this is plus a dot uh, B uh, and plus B dot C plus c dot a I understand this pretty much into twice right so let me just introduce a concept now let's say I put this value of this from here I'll substitute this value here right and what this value will become this is one this is one this is one so after you substitute let's see what it will become so it will be two times mod a square mod uh, b square mod c square minus 2 times right so minus 2 times will be what let me just write it here it will be 3 minus can I say something like this equal to 9 right and in fact if you see this particular step also this is nothing but what this is add up to 3 all right and yes sorry this will be positive all right I have taken already the count of negative sign so if you solve this so what it will become let's see now this will be 6 plus 3 minus uh, a plus b plus c square is equal to 9 which actually reduces to that a plus b plus c modulus square is nothing but 0 and this could only be 0 when the yes internal vector is 0 so this is the only possibility then only their magnitude will be 0 right so if this is equal to 0 now what next we can derive here so actually if i say the problem is over now let's target what was our target so target was to find the value of 2a plus uh, 5b plus 5c now can you see some symmetry in this question yes the symmetry is that you have 5 and b and 5c so i can say 2a plus 5 times b plus c right and what is b plus c from here b plus c from here is nothing but minus a just substitute this value over here so if you do this step so the target then just simply reduces to 2a minus 5a which is nothing but modulus 3a which is 3 times mod a 
modulus a is nothing but one because they are unit vectors answer is three this is the answer we were looking for as simple as that so you can just imagine if this question was being asked at iit i would say that itj advanced to be specific i would say this was a very easy problem we just have to think on how we are going to infer what is given what we know and what is the target that's the whole game all right so by this we come to the end of today's lecture we'll continue again uh, tomorrow with the you know vector product of two vectors uh, or the cross product which you called famously uh, i'll be sending the worksheet till the scalar uh, dot product all right you can just start solving them and by tomorrow we'll finish and then you can even solve the entire worksheet all right so i'll see you tomorrow good night till then keep learning